Hello everyone, I am hoping that this is working. I'm going to give it a couple of seconds. If you have any um, audio issues where you can't hear us or you cannot see the video, please put it in the chat right now um, before we move forward because I don't want to sit here and show you. Look, I'm actually on camera now. <laughs> this is part of the new format and we're going to talk about that in this video. So let's make sure everything is uh, running as expected and then we're going to just, I mean, we're just going to jump right right into it. All right, Owen, you want to make sure that you are, Owen is going to be um, the, the voice in my head today. <laughs> so if you want to see if uh, people can hear you. Can they hear me? Hello, hello, hello. You're a little close to your microphone. We got some breathiness, which, you know. <laughs> Okay, uh, we are making one quick last minute change to have um, Owen who, um, unfortunately, yeah? I'm gonna keep going. Um, Owen is, I can hear you, but we need we, are, we can check the chat to see if people in chat can hear you. Okay, um, so yes, we are waiting for Owen. Once you can start here, Owen talking, just let him know. But I'm going to go ahead, and since y'all can hear me and uh, see the background behind us, I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it while we're waiting. So like I said, Owen is going to be here. He's going to be just audio today. Um, <laughs> the chat is pretty fun. So, um, okay, so we're going to talk about the lots of new changes obviously we have a new format we are uh, changing it up so that you guys can start seeing us on camera a lot more um, i'm going to introduce uh, some changes to our youtube channel let's kind of start there i think that's a great place for us to s jump right into this um, we are revamping redoing uh, almost every video on our youtube channel to make it a little bit more user friendly so what you'll see here is not only has the banner changed look at our super cool comic book characters I love them uh, I, I really am enjoying that so as you check back this will be continually updated and changing uh, I want to talk about we are going to start creating um, content in playlists that are more targeted to the different groups of people that utilize and so so you see here we have network management videos classroom management training videos now the great thing about this playlist is this is something that we had a video before that walked you through all of the classroom management tools 45 minutes long way too much to ingest in one sitting so what we've done is we're taking that and taking it into smaller chunks so if you play the the full playlist playlist all in one go it'll just bounce from video to video and you'll get the full training that you need for in this case classroom management however maybe you are looking for just a specific tool or you just want to bounce around at your convenience and start getting an idea of how to utilize our software you can actually see in the thumbnails very nice and big what it is that we're going to be talking about in that video and you can go straight to it so I'm showing you this on the classroom management this is our first uh, jump off point Hello. to start getting um, all these videos done and then let me go back you'll see that we're going to have one a separate category for network uh, management safeguarding installation troubleshooting Chromebook everything pulled out in these nice little specific um, uh, playlist and especially for teacher training it is very hard for them to find 45 minutes in one go and even with the chapters that they do on YouTube now I found that that's very chunky to kind of figure that out so we thought these nice little short two to six minutes six minutes is kind of the outside side of it um, uh, on some of the tools that kind of have more in-depth features in it is a great way to learn about our software and help with training on um, the end when software comes in and really get that teacher buy-in from it. Great. Okay. So let's Can hear me now, by jump. the way. Oh, yay. Can everyone hear Owen? Yeah, you should be able to hear me. <laughs> I just had to confirm someone heard me say hello. So and apparently my <laughs> voice is a bit loud, but I can't really help that right uh, now. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Just just talk in a, in a, in a hushed tone. I think, it, yeah, but the problem is Microsoft Teams has that auto audio correction thing. So it gets even louder and then you hear background noise. So yeah, I, I can't really win today, to be honest. 
Um, well, I'm glad you're here, and and always uh, Owen is always the voice from above. <laughs> <laughs> um, we will be uh, getting to the point where, just like our podcast, which we will talk about here in a minute, um, where you'll get to see Owen and I on camera. Um, so yes, you'll see the new format. Uh, I know I keep I keep going out of the green screen. I need to work on that. Um, we are trying to do this in a, a a little bit more relaxed kind of Twitch streamer sort of atmosphere as far as engaging with our customers. Okay, so let's talk about what you're here for. Um, all of the changes that have happened recently, um, you'll notice the first thing that we are going to jump right into is, holy moly, our portal looks different. We had a big UI change. One of those is, you know, uh, changing up the the way that the module icons look here. I will bring your attention that you might want to look at them because some of them, they're all the same functionality. They may be called something different. Um, so you may just want to kind of, as you go through and click on them, familiarize yourself with some of the new names and some of these tools but I want to bring attention look at that can you I, I'm sure some of you know what this is but this is something very exciting as we offer so many tools and especially if you're a super user organizational admin golly you've got so many tools up here at the top or if you're making your own icons I can only imagine how many icons you have so now you can actually come over here you click on that lovely little push pin thumbtack whatever you call it. I'm sure you guys in UK call it something completely different than that, right, Owen? What's that? Sorry, the thumbnail, the, mm -hmm. the magnifying glass. No, the thumbtack or you know, push pin, like up here. Oh, uh, we just call it pinning, I think. We just pin it. Because <laughs> <laughs> every time I say that, I'll push be like, taff. it's a push pin. They're like, no, it's uh, called like Laffy Taffy or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> if you... <laughs> so if you click on these, it's going to do its little animation thing and then move that bad boy right to the beginning of your list. Okay, maybe you want to kind of shuffle these around a little bit. You click it and it's going to move it right back where it needs to go. So this is going to be super helpful. So you, um, you know, you're not having to go, okay, I, no, it's here somewhere. I know they're in alphabetical order, but I'm the same way. I'm like, I'm looking, especially if I have all my icons. And of course we have the lovely search feature down here that if you are looking for something specifically, it is very easy to get that list exactly down to where it needs to go. So. That is, oh my gosh, huge, 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 huge. Um, that's one of those tools uh, that, you know, just that kind of little tweak in there as you're using it every day, um, it kind of makes it a lot easier if you have a certain subset of tools that you are, that's my tool, I use it every day, all the time, I want it right there at the beginning. So make sure you use that. Okay, uh, let's see what we want to talk about. I have, I'm looking over here, excuse me for my Oh, over here. I have notes. You guys know uh, if you are regular listeners of the podcast, if I have notes of any kind, it's very serious. Uh, let's talk about the podcast real quick before we jump into the next thing. Podcast's been a little bit of a hiatus. That's because we have been getting some more equipment in, obviously, uh, changing up the format a little bit, and we will start that back up very soon. So look, uh, make sure that you have subscribed to it so you get those notifications. Um, o and I will jump right back into that and start talking about being in the industry, um, things about uh, just tech stuff. How exceptionally we're busy we've been. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, and that's one of the reasons that we have been on hiatus because yeah. of so many of these changes. That's why we're doing this video right now to kind of showcase what has been happening in the background. You know, if Senso goes dark and quiet like this on socials, we are up to something good. So just know that now we're back and these things have been released. It's something good. Uh, that I went full Texas on that one. I think that's a good place to jump into. Uh -oh. Um, we are going to talk about some of the changes on um, logging, and then our biggest release right now is we're going to talk about some ex uh, some safeguarding. I don't want to I don't want to you know ruin it until we get there, but we are going to talk about safeguarding. So one of the bigger changes that has also come out is within your violations, you can now um, let me go ahead and pull this up for you. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom and you may have noticed that is not what I wanted to do. 
you may have noticed this lovely little dictionary right here. This is uh, a way for you to get a definition of the keyword violation now. So if you're not sure what it is, this is something we've added in so that you can go ahead and um, see what the definition of trolling is. So obviously this is something you can pull up and see within the logging. That's a really cool tool. I, I know I have some customers that, you know, they don't really want to type things in and look it up and they'll ask me to do it. And I'm just like, okay, let me go, let me find it <laughs> and let them know what it means. So now you can get that definition right there. That's really cool. Okay, um, I'm going to take just a moment to look over at chat to see if I've missed anything before we move on to the next part. Okay, no, we're good. good there. All right, All right. Uh, we're going to jump into kind of the biggest reason we, we've gone a little dark is bah, 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 Microsoft Teams safeguarding and logging. This is a... Um, element that can be put into Senso that if you have uh, Microsoft Teams, you don't have to turn off the chat functionality now. Um, you can actually safeguard that and get these um, violation alerts just like you can in logging. With that uh, will also come the images as well. And then if you go into, you see we also have that um, definition there. And if you go into the chat itself or the excuse me the violation itself you will be able to add notes you will be able to do the status and also you will be able to view the entire chat transcript so maybe this one um you know it could be um they're talking about xbox or something else but that we do have some very inappropriate words in there because we've been testing this in our end so i'm being very careful to not showcase that too much but just think of how great this is that you have the ability now to safeguard teams uh, get these uh, uh, violations in here and then also be able to see the chat transcript. Now the great thing about this is it can also be used as a standalone, uh, what do they call, is it a, uh, an app on in Teams? Client, uh, yeah it's like an app, it's clientless as well though isn't it? Yes, so oh sorry. We've yeah. been calling it clientless. Oh uh, yes, sorry, clientless. Uh, what was the other yeah. word that we were teasing? I can't remember. We were having a good laugh about agentless. <laughs> uh, that's the one. Agentless. Agentless. <laughs> <laughs> um, agentless. So essentially, if you uh, don't have a sense of portal. Don't worry, you can actually uh, utilize Senso uh, within your teams independently of having a Senso portal. So of course we wanna encourage you to use Senso to its fullest ability because we have so many great tools in there, but maybe you're just kind of, okay, I need to see about it, but I really wanna get Teams chat back out there for my users so you can actually use this as a standalone agent client, client list, however you want to, um, uh, call it. So I will ask, I know we have some of our representatives in the Senso chat right now. So if you have questions about pricing or getting this for your school district, your company, your Tennessee, your MSP, whatever, uh, please just drop us a line in chat here. You can always contact us, um, you know, through your sales representative, your customer success representative. Uh, our email is superhero at senso.cloud. I know in the States, it's superheroes at senso.cloud. Uh, you can always come in through support, support.senso.cloud and get to us or just go to our website. And there are links to talk to us all over that bad boy. So I am very, very excited to be able to talk about this. We do have a little uh, a video commercial about this on our YouTube channel right now. Uh, we will be posting this and then Owen and I will be filming a how to install, how to set up, all of that sort of thing going forward. So that, that will be in its own separate playlist. It will be a Microsoft uh, based playlist about all of that. Um, Owen, I'm actually, if you want, I think this is a good time to also talk about some of the things over here in Data Sync. Yeah, so uh, I mean, are we, we, I think we showcased this before um, with the Microsoft Teams Sync back in, when was it? Would have been June, May, was it, I think? Everything has kind of merged together. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, we've had the amount of features that we've released recently, it's um, been an explosion. But the, yeah. we, we, my, I wanted to explain a bit more about what Microsoft Teams Sync is because it has a lot of multiple uses. Um, I am currently suffering, for, suffering from the classic COVID working from home. I have my children around me at the moment, so you may hear it out in the background. I think it's cute. <laughs> 
Yeah, she, she's not being cute right now. She's been annoying. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but the Microsoft Teams sync stuff, it's it, it's it's a it's a time saver. Is the best thing I can descri- describe it. It's a, t- a time saver on an administ- on the administration side of things. If you import your um, school classes into using SDS into Microsoft Teams, so if you've got all your Teams classes um, and they're all there as groups. What this will allow you to do is import those classes into Senso. And what you're then also able to do is also create your console users um, from that same data, from the Microsoft Teams data. And the way it works is, is that we, we can import users that are owners of Teams. And those owners of Teams, when they log into Senso, they will see all of their classes that they are owners of, all their teams that they are owners of. So this would mean a teacher would see all of their classes. And when their students log into their devices, their students will filter into those classes. <clears throat> and it's very, it, 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 it's pretty much, if, if anyone's used Google Classroom or knows how Google Classroom works, the two look the same on our mm-hmm. side, on the sensor side. You either see your Google classes or you see your Microsoft Teams classes, depending on which one you, you see. Um, and the Microsoft Teams classes as well, they work with both Chromebooks and Windows devices. So if a kid's logged into a Chromebook device, but you guys use Office 365, it doesn't matter. They'll still filter into those classes. They'll still see them in their correct classes. It's a time saver for the administrator because it means they haven't got to sit there creating loads of users manually they haven't got to sit there setting up access permissions on groups and things they haven't got to sit there creating tons of groups and loads of groups it's all that is automated for the for the for the administrator and it makes it nice and easy for the teacher because all the teacher has to sit there and do is log in select their timetable class that they're in right at that moment once all their kids are logged in they'll see all the they'll see all their kids logged into their class right it's a and, time saver it's and the, i know the, Sorry, I, I know a lot of teachers, they utilize us in conjunction with Teams so that you have both pieces, essentially, that you can see their desktops, but you can also see them on video as well. Um, exactly. if, if that's something that they're utilizing within Teams um, so that, you know, it's just like it's a virtual classroom um, in that you can see them as if you were in the classroom with them, but you can also make sure that they're staying on task on their laptops as well. Um, so I just wanted, I just, I was like, I don't want to forget saying that. The other thing to mention as well, um, and I will be producing an article on this um, soon, is that on your actual Teams classes themselves, so all the Teams classes that the teachers use, you do actually have the power to actually add a website tab to those classes and actually put the portal on those website tabs, and you can actually access the Senso portal from within Senso. So yeah. well, obviously each class that you go, it saves teacher having to go to a website and logging into Senso, logging into Senso, they could do it straight from within Teams. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. Uh, trying to make it, it's that old adage of the less clicks, you know, the less things yep. you have to open. It, it's like single sign on. How great is that? So it's not yet one more password, kind of the same thing. And I know you did kind of touch on uh, KB articles. Our support page um, has is still support. At, you know support.tenso.cloud it is on the back end changed a little bit we are working to make that more user friendly as well and tie youtube videos to kb articles to the portal itself so that there are a lot of very easy avenues for anybody from the safeguarding person to teachers to networking people to be able to find the support articles they need and of course with anything like this that we've talked about today with setting it up please contact us at support uh, we are here to set up sessions with you so that we can walk you through any of the setup of this uh, to make sure that it's done correctly. So let's talk about Microsoft Teams monitoring. Same thing. I think it would be best on this if you um, would like to uh, trial this or you want to go straight into it of any kind like that, please re- reach out to your representatives. We will uh, then assist you with setting it up so that you can go ahead and start looking at that Teams monitoring information. Is there anything else specifically for this for the monitoring that we should talk about? I lost that one. Sorry, okay. just, uh, just <laughs> lost on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> right, I'll put myself on mute by accident just to avoid the screaming. Um, yeah, I mean, the only thing really to mention, it, we, the, the, we do have, obviously, the reason for the team's chat monitoring um, 
a lot of it is down to the fact that schools have been turning off the chat feature mm -hmm. and the chat feature we we think and a lot of other people think would actually be really useful for schools to use <clears throat> because you know it gives the teacher the ability to actually do remote learning talk directly to the kids and the kids to also communicate with each other but obviously the problem what was with teams before this came about was the ability to be able to safeguard those messages and safeguard those chats because they you know they they, they can be it can be used for the wrong reasons it can be used for, they, they, they talk about things like suicide and it's very hard to track all of that stuff mm -hmm. the old way within microsoft this solution is to solve that problem so that you can monitor those chats you can see um, if anything bad has been said, you can safeguard your children while they're using Microsoft Teams. This is what it's there and what it's there designed for. Um, and I think it's an, an extremely valuable product because, I mean, it, they you use chat within, I think you use chat within G Suite as well, can't you? Is that right? Yes, um, but again, a lot of schools will turn it off because yeah. of it is something that is incredibly difficult. And I don't know within Google Admin, I'm pretty non-existent as other than going into the vault to like manually go through stuff. Um, where our just normal safeguarding solution is looking at anything being typed in there inappropriate. So it, it gives the schools a lot more avenues for distance learning and distance teaching as well. Um, because you're going to find that school districts as we go forward during everything that is associated with COVID, that it is a hybrid model that has become the standard for most schools, where they have students that are on site and students that are off site, teachers that are on site, teachers that are off site, uh, you know, on and off site. Um, it's a constant ebb and flow of some students are in the morning and afternoons and block time. And if someone tests positive, that whole class is gone. So it is something that this gives uh, our users a lot of flexibility to be able to have all of these mechanisms in place so that they can have Teams, they can have Google, they can safeguard, they can see the devices, whether they're on-site or off-site. Um, so many things to help with that because, you know, there's so many other things that you need to worry about. Let's let's make at least one thing one of the, the easiest things for you to be able to utilize. So you see why we've been gone <laughs> um, is this is one of those big uh, changes that we had. It was all hands, um, even to the point that your favorite Texan here was actually in the UK office for a little bit because we needed we needed the whole team together to get ready for this. So I'm so glad we could talk about it now and uh, showcase this to you. And I would I, I can't wait to start talking to everybody about it. Um, OK, so now we are going to move in to uh, back over here, I, I think. That is um, everything big announcement wise. I, I have one more little kind of sidebar thing I'm going to talk about because we do want to keep these uh, webinars very short and sweet, 20, 30 minutes, because again, we know this is, you know, for uh, here in the States, this is the beginning of the morning for some of our users. Over in the UK, it's kind of in the afternoon. We don't want to keep you around forever. Uh, of course, if you are in the chat asking us questions, man, we will stay online and answer any questions until it's done. But I don't want to just kind of keep going on and on because we're we're going to start back up this sort of content so make sure that you subscribe to all of our socials um, and and have those notifications turned on so that you know and can prepare when we have another live stream when these videos start getting published on our YouTube channel when the podcast starts back up and of course talking about podcast again because I love it I want to promote the just absolute crud out of it if you would like to be featured on the podcast or you know someone please um, you can also send us information about this person would be great um, this topic would be great. I'd love to have you guys research and talk about this. Um, that is something you can send us about that. Okay. So uh, I have intentionally brought you back here to uh, highlight this update required right here. It is very, very, very important. How many varies? I don't know how I can put in that. Um, that if you have any out outdated clients uh, Windows clients that are sitting in your portal, you you really need to get those updated ASAP. Um, this is something with a new portal uh, updates that have that have come out, all the new changes that have happened on the back end. Um, a lot of modules have been changed to make it faster, quicker. You know, all of those. It 
it requires you to be on the latest MSI client. So we want to touch on that. Did, is there anything else, Owen, you want to uh, kind of add in about that? Yeah, I mean, it, obviously it's of paramount, it is of paramount importance that we get this, get, that you get your clients up to date. We, we have three different status messages that we say on there. There's online. There's update available and update required. Anything that says update required, we're essentially saying that it's important that you update. Um, it could be we, it could be for any reason as to why to keep these these clients up to date. It could be for security reasons. It could be for um, as as of right now, this is it's because of the growth of our product. We've made so many technology changes. It's and because we're changing and upgrading our own technologies and obviously we have to apply different codes on the clients, it's important that you update your clients. Very important. <laughs> yes, and, and if you have used any sort of deployment method, especially group policy, uh, PDQ or SCCM, please keep utilizing those for your deployment of the new MSI out. Uh, again, I, some with my clients, uh, sometimes in the States, it'll be something that is an initial deployment, and then we will actually turn those deployments off and rely on the client updater within the Cento portal itself. However, um, especially with PDQ and a CCM, it's very, very easy to, once you have those deployment packages built, um, just to drop the new MSI in there in that file. Don't remove the old file because it needs to look at the file versions, especially if you're doing doing this through AD, please, I um, implore you, <laughs> if you work within AD, you know what a house of cards, can of worms, whatever sort of local colloquialism you can, want to give with AD. Can you show the GPO upgrade guide? Because it's... Uh, 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 is it on the this, support? Yeah. So if you go to support.sense.cloud, um, it's on the step two. I think it's on the second step. Um, and you'll see it there. And there's a, G a, a how to upgrade the client using GPO. It is very important that you follow those steps and don't um, hey, don't next. delete the old MSI. <laughs> um, I will find it. I, I'm not sure. It's uh, there on the second. If you click on the second one, so you have got first step and then second step, and it's under its client installation. You would think I would know what this. How to client installation? Yeah, I only changed it recently. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how to deploy the client installation. Yeah, it's exactly. under there. It is yeah. under there. And it's, if you search GPO or how to upgrade using yeah. GPO. Uh, uh, oh, that's what I was looking for. Uh, yes, because of putting the... Um, Anything with Active Directory, whenever you build those deployment packages and you have that shared file or shared drive that is out with those devices and they have um, the older version, it's important to keep the older version there because when they put the newer version, it's going to make sure that the version numbers, it, it matches those up. So it needs to find an older version number to say, oh, okay, this is the new one. And if you don't, it is whew, it is tough to come back for that. So yeah. uh, PDQ, SCCM, Intune, oh my gosh, how, those are super easy. Those are drag and drop the new MSI and you've got no problem. If you're using um, GPO to to push out your uh, updates or do your in initial installation, my recommendation, I'm sure Owen will agree with me, is set up your software deployment package, do group policy preferences to add in the information, and then uh, make sure when you do updates that you're using that same um, software installation. You're just adding in the new package and then doing a GP update on all of your devices. So this is imperative. This is something that we would not spend so much time in a live stream like this unless it was something that is helpful for you. This is to keep um, everything running as expected on your end and our end. And, you know, you get a lot of benefits with just keeping things updated. So, you know, I uh, wanted to bring attention to that. All right. Um, I believe that is, uh, let me check. I'm going to go into my notes. You know, if I have notes, I believe that is everything that I had on my end as far as I wanted to talk about with today. Um, we will be doing more of these live streams. Uh, again, we encourage uh, customer feedback, connection, content from you. Uh, we are always listening to you guys about what you want, uh, feature requests, anything like that. So make sure that, again, you check out all of our socials, whatever is your preferred method, we're on there. Uh, we also have a Discord. Owen, if you want to plug the Discord a little bit. Yeah, uh, if, you've, if you've never heard of Discord, um, it is traditionally, it's, it's basically a good 
community format. It's a piece of software you can use, or it's a website you can go to. Um, if you want to get the link for joining Discord, then give us a sh just get in contact with us um, using the normal methods, and we'll send you the link to get onto it. Um, and it's a community of all of our customers in there and like-minded people. And you don't have to just talk about Senso. You can talk about anything you want to. And I know that the community within Discord do talk about other subjects as well, about their day-to-day -day jobs and that. So it's a good way to um, meet new meet new faces and get to know what how other people do, do their job effectively. Yeah, it, it, I like the, the community. It, that is a very important, uh, you know, descriptor of what it is. Um, this is really anybody that is using Senso, a community of people, but typically those are going to be um, tech or the, there's, there's a teacher section as well in there. Don't feel like we've, this is just for the, the technicians and directors and everything. There's a teacher, there's a gaming section. I know there's an anything but Senso section, <laughs> which I find hilarious. You can talk about anything but Senso. Um, so yes, please make sure you join our Discord card um find us um at senso.cloud and if you need any uh so any uh information superhero at senso.cloud contacts us at support.senso.cloud and we will be here for you so thank you so so much everyone for joining us today i don't think i missed anything in chat i did the quick look over there um i will leave the uh in screen up um if you want to